Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a hemostat mandala, and this one I'm going to finish off with a little bit of hot water irrigation. I'm going to begin by centering the shirt, and this process is going to go really fast. But down below in the description for this video, I have a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. Essentially what I'm doing is getting both halves of the front of the shirt next to each other and both halves of the back of the shirt next to each other. That way, whenever I apply the dye or do anything to the shirt, both halves of the front of the shirt are going to look more similar or alike and the same thing for the back. Okay, now that the shirt is centered, I'm going to go ahead and start folding the mandala. I'm going to begin by finding an area where I'd like for the center of the mandala to be and I'm going to place a mark with a washable marker. I usually like to start mine just a little bit below the armpit. Then I'm going to place a straight edge on that mark and fold the hem of the shirt up until I folded the shirt basically in half. Now I'm going to grab the hem of the shirt and fold it back down to that initial seam. I use the straight edge just because I think it's a little bit easier to get a clean seam or fold right there. I'm going to remove the straight edge, then pinch the seam on the shirt, and when I lift it up, it's going to fold the top portion of the shirt down. I'm going to make one more fold on each side of the shirt. This is going to give us an eight point mandala. If you were wanting a 16 point mandala, you would just go ahead and make one more additional fold on each side of the shirt. This design is kind of thick to begin with. So adding another fold would make it very difficult to use the hemostats. They wouldn't really be able to clamp down on the fabric very well. Speaking of hemostats, the ones that I'm going to use on this shirt are curved hemostats. I'm mainly using 10 and 12 inch hemostats for this design. I'm sorting my hemostats in pairs because that's the way I'm going to apply them to the shirt. I've coated each pair of my hemostats in heat shrink tubing, placed some heat shrink tubing, which I purchased from Lowe's or Home Depot, over the teeth of the hemostats, and then used a heat gun to shrink them to fit. This helps protect the shirt from being damaged by the teeth of the hemostats. I'm going to start down at the very end, or what is the center of the mandala, by placing one hemostat at an angle. I had a viewer share a tip that they use some rubber bands, place them around the handles of the hemostats, and that helps to keep the hemostats from flying off of the shirt if they happen to come unhooked. That was a brilliant idea. So on designs that are really thick like this, I go ahead and place a rubber band around the handle. Without the rubber band around the handle, if the hemostats come unhooked, they can actually pop and travel quite a ways. So they can be a little bit dangerous if they do pop off the shirt. The rubber bands really do help keep them on the shirt, even if they do come unhooked. It takes a little bit longer to apply them, but I think it's worth it. From here, I'm going to apply hemostats and pairs on the shirt with the curved portion facing each other. And I'm going to alternate adding hemostats to each side of the shirt. I'm beginning with the 10 inch hemostats and then when the fabric gets too thick and it's hard to clamp the hemostats down on the fabric, I'll switch over and start using 12 inch hemostats. I also placed a mark on the outside of my shirt with a washable marker for where the neck of the shirt is. I don't want to take my hemostats up beyond that area.
Okay, now that I have all the hemostats on the shirt, for the remaining part of the shirt, you can do whatever you want. You can just leave it like this, or you can do what I'm doing and place some really large folds in the shirt and hold those folds in place with some rubber bands. Now I'm gonna take this shirt and I'm gonna place it on top of a metal rack and put it aside for a few days and allow it to dry out completely. I like to dye really thick folds like this when they're completely dry. If you'd like a little more information about this, I have a blog out on my website and I have a link to my website down below in the description for this video. I basically get better color saturation in the middle when they're completely dry. For my dyeing setup, I've taken the metal rack and placed it over the top of a long plastic tub or tote. Then because the shirt is totally and completely dry, I'm going to lightly spray it with a little bit of soda ash solution, which I've placed down inside of a spray bottle. This is going to help the dye stick a little bit better to the top of the shirt. I'm going to incline this shirt, so I'm adjusting my shirt on top of the metal rack to make sure I can place one end of this metal rack down inside of the container without disturbing the shirt too much. So it looks like I need to pull the shirt up on my metal rack a little bit more. So I'm going to get my shirt adjusted before I start to apply the dye. It's a lot easier to do those adjustments now. So when you look at the shirt, I have sections on the shirt. I have the little sections that were formed by using the hemostats, and then I have kind of a zigzag pattern in between the hemostats. In the sections, I'm going to use kind of teal type colors in part of the sections and purple colors in the other part of the sections. The sections on one side of the shirt are going to be the teal colors and the sections on the other side of the shirt are going to be the purple colors. Because I alternated adding the hemostats back and forth on the shirt, the colors are going to alternate too. So there are going to be bands of color. I'm going to have a band of blue, then purple, blue, and so on. So right in the very center, I'm going to use Bahama Blue from Dharma Trading Company. Then on the lower sections, I'm going to use Caribbean Blue and Parakeet from Dharma Trading Company and teal blue from dye spin. Then for the purple, I'm using royal purple from dye spin, then elven lily and imperial purple from Dharma Trading Company. I believe that elven lily is a special order color, which means that Dharma doesn't have it available for sale in smaller quantities all the time. They do usually offer it in larger quantities, but if you'd like to purchase it in smaller quantities, I have a link down below in the description for this video to a Facebook group called Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace, where people in that group purchase the special order colors and sell them in smaller quantities. For the zigzag portion of the shirt, I'm going to add a different color to each portion of that zigzag. So I'm starting with Cotton Candy from Pro Chemical and Dye followed by Razzle Dazzle, Peony, Raspberry, and Sweet Pea from Dharma Trading Company. Then in the last major section, I'm going to use Bubble Gum from Pro Chemical and Dye. And then I'm going to take Mulberry from Pro Chemical and Dye and place that all on that outer edge of the mandala portion. <music> Now that I have the dye on this part of the shirt, I'm going to go ahead and make myself an ice barrier. You can make the ice barrier before you apply the dye. 
However, because I'm filming my process, it's a little difficult for me to see what I'm doing without getting in the way of the camera if I make my ice barrier first. I also thought I would experiment with spraying a little bit more of the soda ash solution over the top. See if that would maybe help keep some of the dye from not falling off. I'm making my ice barrier using some silicone cake molds and clothespins. You kind of have to get creative with making ice barriers for these shirts. For this final area, I'm going to use three colors. Going down through the middle, I'm using Orchid from Dharma Trading Company. Then on the top portion, I'm going to use Royal Purple from Grateful Dyes. And on the bottom portion, I'm going to use Scottish Heather from Dye Spin. Then I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of all the dye and add on the ice. Then to place the shirt in an incline, I'm going to take one end of the metal rack and stick it down inside of the plastic tub or tote. I'm leaving the center of the mandala at the top of the incline. Then I'm going to place the shirt aside and allow all the ice to melt. After the ice melted, I came back and added another small or thin layer of ice. I noticed that I had some undissolved dye left sitting on top and wanted to make sure I forced as much of the dye through the shirt as I could. After the second layer of ice melted, I let the shirt process for about 12 hours and then decided to go ahead and do some hot water irrigation on the shirt to finish it off. So to do that, I've heated some water to between 145 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I've placed it inside of a sprayer like a lawn or garden sprayer and I'm going to gently mist the shirt with the really hot water. I like to heat my water up using a sous vide wand. So I have a sous vide wand and a container that I put the wand in. You can set the temperature for what you would like for your water to be at. The sous vide wand will bring it up to that temperature and then hold it at that temperature for whatever timer you set on your wand. I have a link down below in the description for this video for all the products that I've used, including the sous vide wand and container. The advantage of using this process to finish off a shirt is if you're someplace where it's a little colder and maybe your shirt hasn't had a long enough time at a hot enough temperature to process properly, you can finish it off with hot water irrigation and that's going to go ahead and bond the dye to the fabric without having to wait the full 24 to 48 hours. Doing ice dye followed by hot water irrigation is kind of the best of both worlds. Your ice melts slowly and it allows the color splits from the dye, but then the hot water irrigation speeds up the bonding process and you don't have to wait as long to rinse out the shirt. I'm just gonna continue the hot water irrigation process until I'm pretty sure my shirt has been fully saturated all the way through. I can't hurt the shirt by adding too much liquid through it at this point. You know, I've already done the ice dye process and this is just kind of to finish off the shirt. So I'm not gonna hurt the shirt by adding too much water. I'm just accelerating the rinse out process. After the hot water irrigation process, I let my shirt sit for about 10 to 15 minutes while I was doing some other things. Then I went ahead and took it to my utility sink to do the rinse out process. So because I did the hot water irrigation, Pretty much most of my soda ash should be out of the shirt at this point, and it's not as important for me to begin rinsing in cold water as it normally is. 
So I can go ahead and just start rinsing my shirt in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and take the hemostats off of the shirt and untie the other portion of the shirt. Then instead of rinsing for a really long time, I'm gonna go ahead and run some hot water in my utility sink, add a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, place the shirt inside the water and just allow it to soak. When the hot water cools off, I'm gonna change it out and continue that hot water soaking process until my water is remaining almost clear. Then I'll put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I'll wash it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so I've washed and dried the shirt and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one looks really fun. I've named this one the lollipop alien because I don't know, the colors just remind me of lollipops. And I think that the shapes that were formed by the hemostats kind of add to that vibe for me. I don't know. I think it's a fun shirt. I like all the colors. I like the way they kind of flow together and work together. You know, purple and pink are great colors together. And then those little pops of blue and kind of greenish colors. I think it looks pretty cool. So with the way that I folded this shirt, the top of the shirt or the top part of the mandala is a little bit lighter than the bottom part. And that's just because that part was probably the part of the shirt that was on the inside. If you notice though, when you look at the front of the shirt, at least both halves of the front look pretty much the same and the same thing with the back. That's because I centered the shirt before I folded it. I don't think though that the lighter part at the top takes away from the design. I just think it looks a little bit different. My colors are nice and vibrant too. So doing the hot water irrigation worked out well. I mean, I'd left the shirt long enough. It may have been just as bright and vibrant if I wouldn't have done the hot water irrigation, but I've had several people ask about doing that process. So I thought I would just go ahead and do it on this shirt. About the only color that didn't show up really well is the parakeet from Dharma Trading Company. And that's kind of a light blue anyway. So that one didn't necessarily show up the way I wanted it to. But honestly, those areas where the parakeet is supposed to be, I think look really cool. Some of the other colors just kind of flowed in there and filled those spaces. By the way, this shirt that I dyed is a Dancing Robin shirt, which is a specific kind of brand of shirt that you can purchase from Grateful Dyes. I bought these a while ago, but just never have actually dyed with them. And they're dyeing up beautifully. If you notice, I don't have any white strings or thread. They use cotton thread. The description out on the Grateful Dyes site says that they are oversized and are not pre-shrunk. So I did notice this shirt is a size extra large. And I noticed when I placed it on my mannequin that it hangs a lot longer than most of the traditional like Gildan ultra cotton shirts. It's also a 100% ring spun cotton shirt. And it says it's six ounce fine Jersey weave. So they're really pretty shirts and dying up really nicely. You just might want to check your sizing before you go ahead and order because you may need to either size down or adjust your sizing a little bit. I washed this shirt in hot water before I dyed it. And then of course I washed it in hot water afterwards. So I'm assuming at this point that it has totally shrunk as much as it's going to. And I still think it's oversized compared to a Gildan just a little bit. So I love this shirt, but what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And for those of you who live in cold weather climates, hot water irrigation might be a great option for you to kind of speed up or finish off a shirt. So if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it. And if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel, if you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.